Hi everyone, welcome to Tea and Talking. My name is Kelly. My name is Amy. And this is our Halloween special. Welcome, welcome, gals and ghouls. <laughs> Guys and ghouls. I love that. I love that term so much. We're thinking about uh, names and how to introduce for this se- for the spooky series. And we're like, guys and ghouls. Gong Fu ghouls. Yeah, Gong Fu ghouls. Oh, I love that Gung name, ghouls. guys. We have to, can we please just like, if you guys are watching this, like just do hashtag <laughs> Gong Fu ghouls. Hashtag <laughs> Gong Fu ghouls. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a really good name. That's us. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so, so for today, Kelly's actually going to be hosting. So Kelly, hello. why don't you introduce the tea for us? So today we're going to be doing our signature rose black tea, which goes really well with sweets, guys. It goes amazing with cakes. We got it from House of Cupcakes. As you can see, I actually started eating a little bit before it. I could not wait. I just, because we always do a lot of prep for these videos. Um, and so when we were doing prep, I was staring at him. I was like, Kelly, I, I got to have some. <laughs> and then I already had one in my mouth. Like, what you mean? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So anyways, let me go off all tell it. Kelly is preparing our beautiful black rose tea. Uh, let me just explain to you what we're gonna do for our spooky series. So we're gonna continue on from when we discuss folklore and today we're going to be discussing urban legends. Of course, Absolutely. Chinese urban legends. I wanna keep to it. Now they could be um, anywhere between creatures to uh, conspiracies to aliens or a combination. Mm -hmm. But we combine some of the more recent urban legends and they're not necessarily from folklore anymore. It's just more like um, stories that people swear that are true, but yes, we don't have solid proof, but yes, it's fun to believe. Mm -hmm. So no. Amy, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry. no, the reason why, because I was actually gonna say that a lot of the stories that we found, like, like Kelly was saying, you can argue that it's been around for generations, but a lot of the ones that we found are more uh, more to modern times, if you will. I think the, the oldest story I have is from 1981, but at the same time, all these stories, people still swear to this day that they've seen a lot of, or heard these stories and it's just been passed around. So you don't quite know the date, but you, you'll get the gist of it once we start explaining these ones. They're a lot of fun. I like the ones we chose this time. <laughs> it's like the story of the Jersey Devil, if you will. Because like the um, yes. local people in Jersey, they know they know the story and they swear it's the truth. But then people are just like, no. no. I know, that is true. You know what I also, fun fact, I know we're trailing off a little bit with the Jersey Devil. So we live in Jersey. And uh, in Jersey, we have a monster called the Jersey Devil, and it's just one folklore that all of us know about and we grew up with. And it's just stories that's been passed down through generations. And yet, uh, somehow, I did not know this, but we're the only state that has like a state monster. I mean, unless you want to talk about Bigfoot, but I don't even know because there's sightings of everywhere of Bigfoot, but we legitimately have our own monster. So kudos to Jersey. May not like Jersey completely and totally, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, well, so, while we're talking yes. about Bigfoot, let me just introduce mine because we got Chinese Bigfoot. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, we got Chinese. So true. <laughs> Isn't that a good I totally forgot about that. Yes. Wow, we're so good. We're naturals at this, Kelly. Okay, I'm sorry. Go All ahead. Right. Chinese Bigfoot. Um, similar to the Jersey Devil, this is something that the locals, they swear that this is true. Now, the description is pretty bizarre, but um, in Chinese folklore, a lot of these mythical creatures are human-like. So um, with the Chinese Bigfoot, there's one called uh, Shan Xiao, and I don't know if I pronounced it right, but that monster, like um, the word Shan means mo uh, mountain right? So uh, that means like it roughly translates into mountain imp or mountain goblin. And this is a creature with a face of a, a human, okay? And the body of a monkey. And it has a, it has like a rat tail or like a dog tail. I forgot. It had like another animal's tail. But nowadays uh, in modern translations, uh, Shan Xiao actually translates into um, a type of monkey. So it's the mandrill mm -hmm. monkey. Yeah. That's so weird. And it lives in the mountains. That's so weird. I don't know. Cause mm -hmm. like, I don't, for some reason, my first thought, remember the chupacabra. If you guys mm -hmm. don't know, it's, it's like a, it's like a creature that sucks the blood of a goat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's in Puerto, like in Puerto Rico, that's, I'm sure you guys might've heard of a chupacabra before. So I won't go on to an explanation, maybe in another story, but that's what my first thought was. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I mean, it's not so much a goat sucker, but I'm saying the description, how it's 
pride off of numerous animals. In fact, the Jersey Devil is like that too, where it's pride off of like other creatures. Mm -hmm. But now to finalize as a monkey, I mean, maybe it is. Mm -hmm. But apparently it has the body of a monkey and it has a human the, face. The human face, yeah. And the lore behind it is that it lives in the mountains and if you encounter it, if it, if it sees a human, it'll like, it'll laugh. It'll laugh at you, apparently. Oh, that's so creepy. Yeah. Ew, if I were to just walk in the mountains or something like that, and then all of a sudden I hear like cackling laughter, <laughs> it's really creepy. <laughs> is it is it more like an animalistic laugh that could be like a monkey voice, or is it like a human voice, like ha 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 ha? I don't know. Entered my lair. <laughs> we, we made a joke prior to this because we we're oh, like, oh, now. if it has a human voice, would it be like, welcome to Chili's? <laughs> 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 like, like, right? Like, what would it say to you? <laughs> Do they have chilies in China, though? <laughs> We're trailing off too much. Oh my gosh. So there's another... <laughs> so because of all of the different components that make up that one creature, um, a lot of, like, a lot of different animals in Chinese mythology, they can also shapeshift. And this thing can impersonate people because uh, it has a human face, you know what I'm saying? So it's like... Oh, that reminds yeah. me of the painted skin story that we put in the other video. Absolutely. Uh, you know, very, very common elements in these. As like, a shapeshifter. Yeah. yeah. And we have yeah. our own, uh, I mean, we have our own doppelganger shapeshifters in, in our own like urban legends in the Western world as well. I'd rather so, take American Bigfoot because at least we know what they look like. But like Chinese Bigfoot, I don't know about that. Because if it could shapeshift, you don't know what you're getting. Yeah. And there's also um, <sighs> one called Yeren, which translates into wild person. And there's a version of Yeren that's uh, considered a uh, oh, yeti. Wow. It's big. It's like very mm, yolked. For that, can't you just argue that a, like a like a regular countryman can be considered that? Like, would that be a slang then? Like, would that be considered a bad word to someone? Yeah, like calling you, them like, yeah. oh, you're you're like country folk. Like, you look like an unshivalled like man. Like, even if they're strong, because like living on the countryside is mm -hmm. hard work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely is. Um, yeah, that's why I'm saying like. Can that be considered like a slang bad word? Oh, I don't think it's a classist uh, thing because you can be okay. a farmer and you can look completely civilized. Like you have a shirt and you like groom yourself and everything. Right. It's just like when you're severely disheveled. I've been called mountain man before. Like I've been called a yeti before. Like, oh, bro, like you didn't brush your hair. You look like a mountain person. It's kind of like that, you know? <laughs> so my first story is actually the Shanghai Dragon Pillar. And I'm sure for those who live in uh, Shanghai would actually understand exactly what I'm talking about because a lot of the locals there have this one variation of the story. Um, but anyways, in this highway that was built in 1995 to 1999, uh, there's this giant highway and at the intersection of, I had to write it down, uh, Chengdu Bei Lu and Yanan Lu. So it's an intersection between these two roads. There is a pillar that has nine dragons wrapped around it. And the whole rumor behind that, or at least the locals believe that uh, for these four years that they were building this highway, for some reason at this one particular intersection, they had to rebuild it like towards the end or they were having all this trouble building it because for some reason they could not dig into the ground. And so engineers could not figure out why. And so they ended up bringing other people in and to the point where they even brought a Taoist priest over and the priest had said, oh, it's because there's a sleeping dragon underneath here, which is why you can't dig into the ground. Uh, so to honor the dragon and to as not wake him, they ended up building the, t the pillar with a bunch of dragons um, honoring the dragon. So that's the whole thing. Like if you ask locals about it, that's the story that they'll tell you. However, there is a reality check to this story. So reality is they just had building issues uh, with the with the highway, which is why they had to build it towards the end. And uh, a person by the name of Zhao Xingrong, he's an artist that ended up painting and like sculpting the dragons on the side. And he made nine because apparently the character for nine is Jiu. 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 Mm -hmm. And apparently in a lot of Chinese um, folklore stories, there's always a dragon that gave birth to nine dragons, apparently in different oh, stories, yeah, yeah, nine dragons. And nine is also a play on words, jiu, jiu, jiu. Um, apparently, it's all a play on words to say, say long lasting. So mm -hmm. as in the artist mm -hmm. ended up making it so that the, it like kind of gave a blessing to the highway that it'll last for many, many years. Yeah. So, so that, was, jiu, that was fun. Jiu. I thought you were going to say booze, alcohol. Because that's also one of them. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I wrote that down over here because I didn't want to get that wrong. Jiu. Yeah, because as you know, I'm... 
I don't speak Mandarin. <laughs> I try. You got it. Yes, I try. I'm learning. So anyways, that's the end of my first story. So, so they thought it was a dragon, but in reality, the building just wasn't up to code? Yeah, there there were some issues with, like, if you actually check the the government papers, yeah. apparently they just had an issue. I don't know what the issues were, mm-hmm. but they just had to wait on it. That's why. Mm. So there was nothing wrong with it. But those locals, they will tell you otherwise. They, it's not a, a matter of an artist drawing it. It's not a matter of, you know, building code issues. For them, it's there's a sleeping dragon underneath. Nine it. of them. Yeah, nine sleeping dragons. Uh, this is going to be a long one, Amy. This is um, the Chinese zombies. So there is so, so much, Amy, there is so much lore that goes behind the Chinese zombie. It's actually kind of <laughs> crazy. It's kind of like the Western zombies, how like you have certain ones that bite you and certain ones that can only crawl, certain ones that can run. And oh my God, the Korean okay, ones. So that are, can, we, like, are we talking about like The Last of Us or like, uh, what is it? Uh so seven, like seven days to die something like um, that. um so in china <laughs> there's a lot of different variations of zombies but they're all kind of the same um the chinese zombie they're very rigid and they're stiff and they can't run um the only thing they can do is they can jump and hop so if they want to like chase after you they're going to be hopping and hopping yeah so they can't crawl or walk or run they can only hop see that like i th- as funny as that sounds because the first time you told me like the first time kelly told me about these chinese zombies i laughed but then the more i think about it the, the more scary that actually gets because first of all i am not a fast runner secondly my boyfriend's a track runner and i've seen people in track and how far they can jump so that freaks me out no, I'm not saying that the zombie will get that far because it's undead and they're probably brittle and broken. So they, their hop is more like a small little bunny hop. But <laughs> on the cases that they jump, like the, the equivalent of a jumping spider. The jumping spider. No, nah, I'm, I'm good. You're not I'm thinking good. about the supernatural abilities. Yeah, that's, they're going to have. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So they. Mm. Yeah. And I'm terrible at box jumps. I can't even like. Fun fact, I literally tested trying to jump over a luggage case and couldn't do it. You couldn't. It's okay. We're about to talk about that another time. <laughs> okay, so how? Let's talk about how. Um, so let's unpack this like a uh, Chinese zombie thing. Yes. Um, there are. Uh, there's many ways to create a Chinese zombie. So some of the origins. I'm not gonna tell you all of them because there's way too many. Sorry, guys. But uh, some of the more interesting origin stories are. Well, first of all, you get a zombie by having an improper burial. So if you like, if somebody died and you didn't give them a correct burial, they're gonna be restless and then they're gonna um, they're gonna come back to life uh, until you give them the correct burial. And that's common okay. in Western culture too. Right. Um, and the other one is that they can infect people to become zombies by biting them or injuring them. It depends, like you can bite or scratch and then they'll become a zombie. So that's like the contagious part that's very popular in Western cultures too. Yeah. Wow. Another way to create a zombie, well, assuming that this person's already dead, another way to create the zombie is that this um, body, the corpse, absorb too much of the yang energy. So there's yin and yang and too much yang will give you a zombie. It's like a bad recipe. Yeah, it's like if you make say, a cake wrong, then it comes out all messed up. But like, they're burying people too. <laughs> Why do you always think of the, the weirdest analogies? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Quarantine did something to me. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Because uh, quick question. I guess Yang is the dark, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's. I just wanted to clarify that because I'm honestly Light and don't dark. know. Good and bad. This is why I need to watch more Avatar. <laughs> I know I'm done. I'm done. After okay, um, again, and then uh, another way that you can make a a zombie is uh, when okay, this is the funniest one. It's when a pregnant cat jumps over a grave. Boom, zombie. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And then the last way, uh, then the last way is through spells and magic, which brings me to how um, the origin of this legend. So I'm just still thinking about the cat. I'm sorry, go ahead. Right? <laughs> like, either a pregnant or like a black cat jumping over a grave will spawn a zombie. I'm gonna lock it's down like a my recipe. cat. <laughs> my cat's not leaving. She's not making zombies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, um, in the beginning when the zombies were, uh, when this story was just beginning to circulate, apparently 
the zombies were created by uh, uh, witchcraft and spells. And the reason why they were created was because when somebody, unfortunately, when somebody passes away, uh, you would have to transport them to their burial site, right? Back in the day, that was really expensive. So guess what they did instead of um, transporting the body? They enchanted the corpse so that it can walk away on its own. What lazy... <laughs> so they can hop their way to their own burial site and then they save, um, they save money on transportation. My goodness. My, I mean that that's understandable. Why can't you it's just bury? Why can't you just bury the dead in your backyard? Like if they're in the mountains, just bury them in the backyard. I'm assuming it has to be a very sacred burial site, or oh, I guess so. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I mean, in America, in the countries that actually, I don't even know if that's legal. I mean, I don't know. Can you? Ugh. Ugh, Can you it. legally enchant? I am a living Ron Dig their own grave. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay. So now that we know where they come from, okay. My last part is fighting the Chinese zombies because they're so easy to create. There's actually many, many ways that you can get rid of these evil spirits. Um, you can actually uh, flash a mirror in front of them and then the mirror, like their reflection, they're afraid yeah. of their own reflection, right? So they'll like, they'll be scared. They'll like hop away and you'll be able to um, run away. If you do a rooster call, if they hear a rooster call, they would also get scared because that means that the sun's going to come up and they can't uh, they can't survive when the sun comes up. Right. It's like Jojo. <laughs> you can also defeat them by throwing seeds. Like you can just like throw seeds at their acupuncture points and you like press them in. I wouldn't want to get that close points. to a zombie. Me neither, dude, because if they bite you, you turn into one too. I'd rather just just do the mirror trick or just yeah. I would take one of my my chickens in the backyard and just like squish them. Yeah. Just squish, just squish them. them. Dang. I'm like, call man. Oh my god. Oh my god, Peter, don't come for us. <laughs> you can also get rid of the zombie using fire. So that's a that's a classic one. Yeah. That's awesome. Just yeah. use a flamethrower and what what are you? Uh oh my gosh, I'm blanking out his name. I guess me. in ancient China it would just be a torch. <gasps> like ash. That's what his name is. Yeah, ash. that's true. You can also use a combination of either like an axe, a broom, or glutinous. That's rice. what I said. I literally said ash from Evil Dead. I was like, yeah. just become ash and then just destroy a bunch of zombies. Okay, there you go. We're good. You can also throw glutinous rice at them. Like, okay, let's just that have draws that. out the glutinous rice draws out evil. So if <laughs> I eat it, <laughs> it, it it detoxes your soul, if you will. <laughs> And then, um, in so in like the pictures, you see a lot of times the zombies are depicted with a yellow talisman over their faces, right? So that's also one of the ways to stop them. You do a talisman, like an incantation, if you will, and then you just stick it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going. I was like, just do it. Oh, I accept. I wouldn't stick it on your head directly. That's kind of nasty. Dude, my skin is so oily. It doesn't even matter. It it's probably oh, going to stick even without the sticky part. <laughs> and you can drop a bag of coins. So then once you drop a bag of coins, the zombie's going to be like, oh. They're going to count the coins, oh which gives you time to run away because the zombies, they love money. And they're going to stop and they're going to count the money. And you can also use a sword charged under the magical moonlight to slay the zombie. I can't imagine why anybody would go through the trouble at this point when you can easily do that with glutinous rice or a broom or an axe. And at least you have all these fun creative ways to, to kill a zombie. Like that's Yeah. You really have no excuse to be caught by one of these things. What is this like uh what is this zombie land? Like the movie Zombie Absolutely. Land where like, people just come up with really, really clever ways to <laughs> to kill zombies. I feel like I still wouldn't like survive if, if it was a, like a one on one fight. I still wouldn't survive. Even yeah, with all these yeah, things. same here. I'm. I know <laughs> that like, as, sad, as sad as this is, I'd probably be the first one dead in a zombie apocalypse. I have nothing to show. Like, like it's so funny because oftentimes people would constantly joke about like, "Hey, who would you have on the team?" And people would always ask me to be on their team. And I'm like, what do I have to give? Like, I honestly don't. Like, I really don't because even with my certain set of skills. I still need access to those. Right, calm down, Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> I still need access to those certain type of skills. 
See, even after all that, I would still pick you on my team. I mean, I would vote myself off the team before (laughs) I vote my own team. I'd be like, all right, guys, I'll take the L. Goodbye. I'll buy you, like, three minutes while they, like, eat me. (laughs) Oh, gosh, how sad that is. Uh, So I'm done with my zombies portion. So hopefully with all this information, you know what to do um, when you see a Chinese zombie. You know how to fight it. And you also know how to create one if you're evil. How would you know it's a Chinese zombie based on, like, other regular zombies? Throw rice at it, bro. <laughs> like, you know, here. I'm sorry, guys. No, you know what? It's it's really cool because in Korea, there's zombies too, right? And then exactly, there's also... Exactly, yeah, I knew that, yeah. Um, I mean, Jojo. <laughs> jo- <laughs> jo- Jojo. It all comes back to Jojo. And that's, you know, a lot of, a lot well, of these things are borrowed. Zombie, and they talk. Yeah. And- but a lot of our zombie culture is also taken and borrowed by... Yes, that is true. That yeah. is very, very I, true. I think so, too. Yeah. Stories change and adapt. Mm -hmm. As you well know with my story, they will change and adapt. I feel like we just did a Power Rangers, like, let's turn off the lights. Okay, anyways. I never even watched Power Rangers. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Watch it. So anyways, my next story is the last bus to Fragrant Hills, or as they say, the Midnight Bus 375, which is the the number of the bus. And this bus is a real bus. They... It was in Beijing, I believe, because Fragrant Hills is in Beijing. So anyways, the story goes that in November of 1995, and apparently you could find reports, although I looked this up and I could not find actual news reports, but based on a lot of the adaptations of the, st- of the story, apparently there is actual news reports of this incident that happened. That's why I said it is, it is an actual bus. So anyways, in November of 1995, There was this last bus, obviously, going down the regular routine, and this bus driver and the conductor had found two people on the side of the road that was not at a bus stop, and they flagged the bus down. So the bus driver was hesitant to stop because being that it's not a bus stop, they didn't want to stop. But the conductor was like, hey, listen, it's the last bus. Let's just go ahead and pick them up. So the bus driver stopped, and the the two people came in along with a third person. So these two people came in shouldering a third third person in the middle of them and they were going into the bus and they noticed that they were wearing Qing Dynasty robes. So uh, so they just assumed that they were just actors or something that were that just finished their last play and they didn't have time to change. So they let them be, go onto the bus and they sat in the back of the bus. As they're going on with the regular routine, this old lady starts yelling at this young man telling him, oh, I saw you stole something from my bag and keeps on calling him a thief and thief. And like the this entire situation just bubbles up and gets worse and worse to the point where the young man's like, you know, s- screw this. Like, we're just going to go to the police station and handle it. Or at least, the, no, that's right. It was the old woman that had said that. Like, let's just go to the police station. So the old woman and the young man got off the bus and the young man was very, very furious because he's like, this is was the last bus going home and there is no police station around. And the old lady, like, you know, smacks him. And she's like, what are you talking about? I ended up saving your life because, uh, and he's like, obviously, what are you talking about? And he's like, she said, there was a window breeze that was coming through and had raised the robes of the three men in the back seat. And she noticed that there were no legs. So it must have been a ghost. And so she's like, we don't know what would have happened if we stayed on that bus. Well, two days later, apparently there was a report saying that the bus never was reported the next day. And two days later, they found the bus 100 kilometers away out of Beijing in the Miyun Reservoir. So the reason why there was such a mystery to this is that, um, first off, there wasn't enough gas to get from the reser- from the fragrant bus station all the way to the reservoir, the Miyun oh. Reservoir. Yeah, it was crazy. And then the second mystery was that apparently the police had found blood in the gas tank. Blood in the gas tank, or the tank was just blood? Yeah, it, as in, like, there was, like, blood filled inside it. Like, oh. it was, instead of gas, there was blood found. I mean, oh. once again, the story, like, I find this very hard to believe, but, like, there's so many locals that, like, know about this story around this area, and they'll tell you the same. And then the, the third mystery about this was that apparently the corpses were so decomposed that didn't make sense. Like, and, and the people that were found, by the way, actually, I should have thrown this in there. Um, there's three bodies found. And it was the bus driver, the um, conductor, and a third body that was unknown with long hair. And presumably everybody thinks that it's the third gentleman, the one that was standing in between the, the two men in the robes. 
Um, so anyways, their bodies were so badly decomposed that it didn't make sense that it was found two days later. It looked like it's, it was found years later. And, uh, there's actually a third, a fourth mystery, but it's kind of an unspoken mystery because you'll see it in other posts about it saying that apparently this was a cover up for a murder that happened in Beijing. So who knows? We don't know. <laughs> oh. The stories always change and, and change and change over time. It gets oh wilder. God. Yes, yes, That's yes. That's crazy. <laughs> so they just discover them in the reservoir, not like parked at the reservoir. No, no, no. It was in, in the, the reservoir. Yeah. And like, that was the other thing too. I I might as well say it. They apparently, they're like, they look through the camera security fo- footage of the Mian Reservoir and they didn't find anything. But I found that very confusing because I didn't even know that at that time, um, China even had like at this reservoir, they I didn't even know they had cameras in 1995 during that time. Mm. Like that's that's why it was kind of like weird hmm. for that. I'm not saying that they don't have cam- like security cameras. I'm just saying yeah, that I'm not sure. why like it, security cameras are pretty expensive. Like why mm-hmm. would you pay to have it at a reservoir? Yeah, that's true. So, Unless the water was for like the town, you know? Yeah, I guess so. In which case that would just be that's that, yeah, that would be horrible. <laughs> oh my god. No wonder they wanted to go for it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but also, that wouldn't even fly in America, that kind of story. Because if somebody said that on the bus, you know that the person's just going to be like, shut up, Karen. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> we don't really respect our elders here. We don't. And it's kind I mean, of sad. we do. That's a we whole do. different topic. We can <clears throat> definitely talk about that. I can talk about that all day long. Same. And not having respect for our elders here oh, in America. Boy. But oh, anyway, boy. another story. Okay, so swinging back to me. Yes. Um, so the next one is also another ghost. It's um, the water spirit, the water pond ghost. Uh, and you can translate that into shui gui. So water ghost or water monster because it's um, evil spirit. Hmm. So what happens is um, there's a spirit that's like, so when you get drowned, uh, your spirit ends up in the pond, right? So your right. spirit can't rest. Um, so these spirits, when they're stuck in the pond, they're gonna call out to you. They're gonna like, if they see somebody that's near the, um, the body of water, they're gonna try to like call out to them and they're gonna try to like say, oh, I need help or can you, can you come closer? Can you come closer? And then oh. when the person gets closer, they, they can snatch you. They're gonna get you because in order for them, to move on in order for the spirit to be released they need to have somebody else take their place instead which is also like an episode of jojo i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so in order for them to leave the pond they have to trap somebody else into the pond you guys know which episode i'm talking about um <laughs> yeah so that's a simple one but it's a really like for me it was a really unsettling one i don't know why but that reminds me of the folklore, um, the Mexican folklore, um, La Llorona. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the same thing. It's a crying woman who uh, tries to lure children to their death into the river. And what's I mean, the reason? At the same time, though, there's variations where it's not by a river. Some people say you could see La Llorona in the streets. I don't know. There's so many variations of the story, but like same thing. It's a concept of luring, luring people into their death. And would yeah. that set her free? Uh, what was her purpose of doing it? I don't remember. Like, when I was living in El Paso, that was the first time I heard about it. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not. Because I've never heard... Um, um, Puerto Ricans have their own different folklore, and so do Mexican. Like, many different Spanish cultures have their own different folklores. Kind of like, obviously, in China, they have their own. Um, so I never heard about this until I went to El Paso, Texas, and a lot of my Mexican-American friends had told me about this story. And then obviously now they made a movie, I think, about it a year or two ago. Uh, so this woman, I believe she was cheated on with her husband. And her husband left her for this young, other beautiful woman. And so the wife being the fact that she could not support the children on her own. Because back then, I don't, I, I knew this was an old story. Back then, the husband provided for the family, so the wife stayed at home. So being that she had no husband anymore because she he left and being that she was the only one that could support the family at this point she knew she couldn't and she didn't want her children to suffer from starvation and stuff like that so she ended up taking her kids and drowned them in the river and um killed herself as well afterwards 
Uh, and so at that point, she sees it as, like, once again, this is different variations, so I'm not entirely sure, but from what I understand, um, she tries to lure other people in as a way of saving them from starvation and hunger, if you will. Like, pretty much the misery of living, as, as twisted as this is. But mm -hmm. once again, I'm coming off of my own memory, so I don't exactly know. It's been a while since I looked at it, so I might have told the story wrong, but... I know it goes along those lines, though, where it's just this woman that constantly cries for her children and tries to lure people to their death. Oh, Yeah. So, um, my third story is called The Single Braid Road, and I'll tie and shorten mm -hmm. this, because this my last year aren't that long. So, it was a husband and wife, oh no, it was a boyfriend and girlfriend who were immigrants trying to um, escape from... Either they were trying to leave Hong Kong or they were trying to get into Hong Kong. So I'm not entirely sure which one. But anyways, they were trying to flee. They were immigrants. And on the train, they found out that there was police that were on the train checking for passports. And uh, in that momentary time, the woman who was the immigrant, not the boyfriend, the woman, um, she had no other way. So they decided to jump off the train. So the woman had jumped off the train first and her braid got caught into the train and took off her scalp and pretty much majority of her face. And so this woman ended up continuing walking. By the way, mind you, the boyfriend did not jump. He saw wow. what had happened to the girl and didn't want, he got too scared and stayed on the train. And I wouldn't blame that him. was it. Like you didn't see him after that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the boyfriend, I'm guessing thought she was dead. I don't know, but she ended up staying on the train. So the girl ended up walking. She still survived. So she was walking and then she finally got onto this one road and finally collapsed and bled out on, on the road. Now, no one knows Single Braid Road per se. There's rumors that it is at Chinese University at Hong Kong. Uh, and they believe that it's this one road on the south wing of the university. I think that's what it is. Um, but apparently all the university students tell all the freshmen, you know, as a spooky story, this story is saying that you can see the woman, like you'll see a woman that oh. cries on the side of the road and she has no face and she has like ripped off scalp and everything. Oh. And so apparently there are students to this day that say that they have seen the girl, um, but no one knows the road exactly. They Sometimes they say, oh, it's this road on the university or it's this road on the university. But if you actually look it up, there's no such thing as single braid road. Um, I tried looking it up and tried finding like more more news about this, but this is the most I can get. So good luck trying to find the road at Chinese University at Hong Kong. And I'm sorry for all yeah. the students there. <laughs> I don't want to find it. I don't <laughs> like, want to find it. I wouldn't that. find it either. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Oh my God. So the whole face just came. Because I was yeah. wondering how if um if the braid got pulled, if it was like one braid. Yeah, it was um, a single braid. Yeah, that's why they call it single braid road. But it, the road itself isn't called that. I think they just named it after the woman. They didn't know her name. She was an immigrant. So they just named it the Single Braid Road. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I oh mean, how could you put a, a name it. to a face if they have no face? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's <amazing. laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, my God. So my last one, my last story is... A, my last one is also a ghost. This one is called... The banana ghost, the banana tree spirit. I'm you telling know. you, we're saving the best for last because mine also is a good one. So you're a banana <laughs> ghost. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> uh, so this ghost resides under a banana tree in um, China, and you can tell the story around like the southern part. I think where the trees are more. Um, where you have more tropical trees, like the banana plant. So you would mm -hmm. also see the story in Thailand, in Indonesia, Malaysia. You know. Uh, so yeah. There's a spirit. It's usually a woman carrying a child underneath a banana tree. You can actually ask this ghost for winning lottery numbers. See, that sounds nice. Yeah, but the thing is, you wouldn't really be asking because the way to do it is you would have to um, tie a string to your bed. And then you would tie the string all the way to the banana tree. So it's like attached with a string. I and better have a banana tree close by. It, it would be close by because you'd be living oh, yeah. in a hut nearby. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say like, that's a pretty long red string. Oh, it's a it's a very long string. So you're tying yeah. it down. You're essentially holding the ghost captive because then the ghost can't like, it, it's basically tied to your rope oh, and no, it can't that's leave. Right. That's right, you told yeah. me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So if you're willing to take that <sighs> ghost hostage, you can literally just be like, okay, I'm gonna let you go if you tell me the winning lottery numbers. And that's how you get the lottery numbers. Yeah, we, we discussed this before and I was yeah. like, I don't want to keep a ghost hostage because yeah, if exactly. I make it mad, then... Well, it's trapped, right? I mean, oh, yeah, but actually, but like, if you don't let the spirit go after you win the lottery, it'll just come over and just kill you. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't know what that was. You get, <laughs> you get got. You get clapped. <laughs> yeah. But it'll come and kill you if you don't um, fulfill your promise because it, it's being held hostage. It's giving you the lottery numbers. Yeah. And if you take that money and if you don't let the ghost free... It's gonna be mad. I don't know. Uh, like that mad sounds that sounds like you. an easy route. I mean, yeah. it's weird because I'm all for hard work, but at the same time, work smarter, not harder. Oh my god! <laughs> Making a case for taking hostages, <laughs> taking ghost hostages. I don't. Uh, once again, like it's one of those things. It's a fine line. Like maybe yeah. maybe my fun side would be like yeah, but my my more it's, grounded yeah. like christian side would be like okay no 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 ghosts no, it's an no. unethical life yeah tip. Unver <laughs> very unethical like let's not do that like <laughs> the dead must must go on and move on to heaven <laughs> yeah so that's the banana tree ghost can help you win the lottery i wonder if it kind of looks like a banana then no 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 it's just a, it's just a banana woman tree. under a banana tree oh yeah. okay okay well yeah. there you Easy go mistake. that's, a, that's yeah. not as bad yeah because then that's it would be bad. like banana ghost imagine if it looked like a banana if it was like the spirit of a banana plant that's what i'm saying it would be how hilarious yeah that that's why be. i would not be able to take this yeah. seriously like would i be talking to a banana exactly i wouldn't even want to let that go because that would just be like, you know what got you. you know how we we're talking about how all these stories like change like and adapt over time and like mm. because word of oral oral stories always change but <laughs> from now on we're changing it that this is it you heard it here in this video we're changing it doesn't look like a woman it's just a banana ghost it's just a cartoon it's just a clip art it's banana just, yeah yeah it's just a coat you know kind of like kind of like the microsoft paper clip or is it is it microsoft right yeah yeah that's what i'm saying like for those of our generation, you guys know what we're talking about. Oh, God, they don't, though. <laughs> they, they really don't, though. And they won't. Amy, we're old. <laughs> Favorite clip. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll go on to my story oh. now. That That's a good nostalgic memory. Okay, anyway. No, I just feel old, man. There's no more nostalgia. We're already, like, we're too old Could for Could you nostalgia. imagine the older generations that were like, well, back in my day, a computer was the size of a room. A floppy disk was the size of, like, a folder. <laughs> Had one <laughs> one file on it. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, that guys. was back in my day. I well, we had floppy disks like this big, like ours weren't that big, but like no, no, my dad it. legitimately has a filing cabinet in the basement of these giant floppy disks, and I'm like, what do they even hold? Oh, we should sell <laughs> like, it on eBay. Like what, like two letters? <laughs> uh, are they in a document? Oh gosh, I'm sorry. At that point, it's literally a document. <laughs> that is, yeah, it is. You know what? You could store like you could just write on the floppy disk, and it stores more than data. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, technology. Okay, we're old. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Point technology being, old. changes. Okay, anyways. Guess our age. I was kidding. No, don't I was say like, that. Don't do <laughs> Why would you ever say that? <laughs> oh gosh, the mystery. I know everyone, everyone's just like, Amy, you look like you're like 18 or 20. And it's like, thank you. Who thank said that? You. Who said that? Okay, remember I just told you about the UPS driver oh, yeah, like yeah, two yeah. weeks ago. That All asked right. for my ID. That's true. Yeah, UPS okay. driver. I don't know if you want to keep this in, but the US you know, UPS driver actually I had to ID me for my package. <laughs> I was like, really? Because it was hazardous, hazardous material. So I don't know if you guys know this, but whenever you're getting a shipment of any hazardous materials, you have to be ID'd. You have to be 18 or older to receive that package. And so this, this guy literally walked up to me. He's like, are you sure you're 18? I'm like, sure. <laughs> okay, I'll get my ID. So I had to show him my ID to prove to him that I was above 18. I'm like, like I'm pretty positive. I know my birthday. Okay, anyways, that's beyond that. Let's get on. So my final story, and I saved the best for last because this is actually genuinely creepy and you can find uh, news reports on this and uh, you may be able to find YouTube videos, maybe possibly. I tried finding it. I wasn't able to find that, but I know that there are um, like international news reports about this incident, so it's really crazy. And it's called the mass hallucination of Yao Mei Ting. 
Yao Ma Tei. Yeah, right. Yeah. It sounds like Cantonese. It is. I think mm. it is because it's on, this one's also in Hong Kong. Half mm. the stories that I got are like some of them are from Hong Kong and mm. China. Well, technically, but banana ghosts could be um, Thailand or Malaysia. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. So there you go. Um, so anyways, this happened in 1981. And apparently at this one station at Yao Ma Tei Station on the Kuan Tao Tong platform, uh, there was a bunch of bystanders, including the, the driver of the, the train, had seen this woman who had jumped right into the tracks and the bus driver immediately stopped. But with the momentum of the train, it didn't stop in time. So they thought at this point, this girl was absolutely dead. Like she's under tr the tracks, that's it. Mm. And everyone was trying to look for her. And like, uh, like this is pretty much, they ended up moving the train over. Like they, they let it go by and tried to find the lady because they couldn't find anything of her. And there was nothing on the train tracks. And so apparently there's like, believe this mass hallucination with all of these bystanders, including the driver to see this lady who jumped on. So they don't know what happened. And like, as far as I know, it's not like it was like a drug incident. Like how could they all see the same thing? It was pretty crazy. And what makes it even crazier is that apparently um, this girl had told her friend that that girl who jumped onto the train, she looked exactly like her. And then two days later, that one girl died of cardiac arrest oh and it was a young girl oh, no. so this friend had actually gone onto the news cat like on the news two days later and explained the story about how her friend had died and she believed that she saw her doppelganger onto this train track i was like yo guys goosebumps man goosebumps oh it's crazy i don't even know what to say that's really creepy yeah that like talking about mass hallucination like i've I can share my own personal story, so I know all about mass hallucination. Not in regarding drugs, by the way. The, trust me, it is a safe <laughs> story. Not that story. kind of mass hallucination. Yeah, it's not like that. I'm telling you, like, I've told Kelly, like, I have my own personal stories where, you know, other people have seen the same things that I have, and it's just creepy, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I swear, uh, whatever you guys want to call it, like, whether it's demons or ghosts or whatever, like, people play with you. Like, be these entities, they scare and, like, play around with you, and that's not a good thing. Technically, you should stay away from these things. So if you see something, look in the other direction. Think about rainbows instead. Yeah, rainbows. <laughs> as much as I watch like horror movies, I stay away from actually going to places like this. Don't you'll never catch me at a haunted house. You'll never catch me like doing anything regarding spiritual stuff. I you, I will never play Bloody Mary. Oh, oh man, God, did we finish so our creepy. tea? Oh yeah, we. Did. Oh no! I want some more. It's okay. I'll make we'll you another one. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, I'm gonna I'll steal some of yours because, by the way, mine was carrot cake, and as you can see, there's only icing left. They, they always put so much icing on these cupcakes. And you just, I just watched you just scrape it all off like a heathen. <laughs> you know, nowadays everyone always wants to talk about icing this, icing that on their cupcakes and stuff, or like cakes in general. Um, for me, I want like a real thin layer of icing just to like nice little sugar coat it, kind of like when you're making a cinnamon and you have that little melted icing. That's what I want. I th that's it. But if you're gonna pound like two to three inches of icing on top, that's a no for me, guys. I'm a pass. No, the banana one is really good because that one's nice and light and it's like you're eating nothing. But you're well, eating I guess you messed cream. up, Kelly, because you should have given me that, knowing me. All right, we're fighting right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Put on your boxing gloves. We're going to fight over this pumpkin spice cupcake. You know I don't have arms for boxing. Oh, no. Look at that. My forearm on the side. Look, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah buddy. Uh, mm. Yeah, you can fight weak. a ghost. You we're very weak. Ghost. We're very weak. Oh my goodness. Uh, we definitely have to tell, like have to have a day where we just tell our personal stories because I think ours are really fun too. But we in the beginning of this video series, we really wanted to stick to just having nice tea and just talking about fun stories um, because my own personal story is legitimately scary. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have any though. All of mine were pranks. Mm. played by other people well my all of my stories were justifiable like you can somewhat reason with these things oh god yeah i mean and some of them i really like the your mom's stories though you really that i don't oh, know that god. i don't know about. i was too young oh, though god. to understand i still have to ask my mom more about those story oh yeah i actually do that's a good question i'll ask my mom later Okay, guys. Um, so today we are going to finish up our tea session. Thank you, guys. And, and we'll probably have you. some more tea, too. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I want some more of the rose black. So after this video is done, I'm going to continue drinking this. 
Okay. Thank you guys so yeah, much. We'll see you, see you next time. Bye. Bye.